I visited doctors who are employing viruses as a radical new weapon in the fight against cancer. This is my debrief. I first heard about this story at Google's summer camp, Larry Page's summer camp in Sicily, and they have all kinds of different speakers come and talk about things. And Dr. Carl June uh, from UPenn came and showed a little snippet of a story of a young girl um, who was dying uh, very close to death with uh, late stage uh, blood cancer, leukemia. And they uh, injected her with a repurposed HIV virus and uh, she got very sick and when she woke up she was completely cancer free. My wife and I have uh, uh, two young children so we were just bawling at the end of the story and um, it was so uh, you know heartbreakingly beautiful that uh, I was wondering why more people didn't know about it and the reason is because um, it's just happening now it's literally happening in real time um, they're just through enough of the trials four years that they can announce it, and so we're going to be the first to announce it. So we're incredibly humbled and really proud of uh, this documentary and getting the word out that we're actually on the first stages uh, to find a cure for cancer. Well, there's a lot of dangers in working with viruses, and that's why at the Mayo Clinic, for example, we had to get uh, you know fully suited up and everything's contained. Um, the FDA makes sure that you know, they go through many procedures to keep the viruses safe. Also, in many cases, they're genetically modified, and then they give you billions of particles of that. So it's kind of re-modified. Same thing with HIV. The HIV virus is re-engineered. So they, they neuter the virus. So it's very dangerous to be working with these in the actual labs, but those are incredibly well sort of quarantined. I think that everybody on Earth is you know one step of separation away from cancer sadly um, everyone has a family member or a loved one um, who has uh, you know experienced the disease either uh, dying or going through the painful treatments that exist today for cancer so i think it's you know tremendously personal uh, for me uh, but it's also tr probably going to be tremendously personal for everyone who's been affected by cancer because you see this the fact that there's perhaps a cure, and then you say, well, how do we speed it up? You know, because I have a loved one, I have a friend, you know, uh, a family member uh, that is affected by cancer today. So how do we get this to market? I, I should imagine will be the number one question on many people's lips. This particular, you know, immunotherapy and viral oncology hasn't been more widely reported on because they haven't been allowed to go public with their results. Again, this is breaking news, if you will, that they're just done their trials to the point where they can actually announce these things. Um, you know, the successes that they've had, the biggest being uh, Dr. Carl June with a 90% success rate for HIV attacking blood cancers. So it's, it's A, early days, although they've been through four years of trials. Um, they're still in trials in Mayo, still in trials in MD Anderson. But again, they're looking for these technologies to come to market in 2016. So this is the first time that we can actually uh, talk about these things. Every virus or, or different viruses have been used for different cancers. So you have measles, for example, for myeloma, for uh, bone cancer. You have HIV for blood cancers like uh, leukemia. And then, you know, for glioplastoma, for brain cancers, you have uh, the common cold. In Canada, they're using a smallpox vaccine. Um, other viruses are being looked at because there's 300 kinds of cancer um, and there's you know, any number of types of viruses. The race now is to find which viruses actually attack uh, which cancers the best, most effectively. Well, I think uh, for success rates, uh, HIV holds the most promise. The, the success rates that uh, Dr. Carl June has had um, with HIV uh, uh, curing or putting uh, remission uh, in leukemia and blood cancers, uh, in some cases 90% or more, uh, in full remission years later. Um, that's, that's why 
that's when we start saying, well, this is a cure, because if you can just take this therapy and be cancer free for the rest of your life, then that's a cure. And so I think that's the most exciting one is, is HIV and blood cancers. You know, it's a very difficult process to get access because it's, you know, for the patients, it's a life and death struggle. They're involved in, you know, clinical trials that are experimental. And so to get access to them and their stories, to get their trust. And then also, you know, we get access to the actual brain uh, surgeries. But I think that everyone wants to get the story out, the patients, the doctors, the hospitals. They want to get the story out because with the story then can come support, can come political uh, pressure and can come more money to pay for these uh, sort of research projects. And I think that's what we're excited about is to get the message out so we can sort of fast track a lot of these technologies. And I think, you know, that's everybody realizes that it, uh, despite how hard it is to have a camera there while you're getting your brain operated on, that you know everybody wants to sort of further along these technologies as fast as possible.